Good morning guys, Tom here. Welcome today for another video. Today we're going to do something a little bit different because recently at Apex I've been bought a brand new laptop which is going to be much more powerful. It's going to be so much better to make videos. It's got so much, it's got 32 gig of RAM. Like this thing's not messing about. But that means that I have this. My personal laptop which I'm starting to break down and kind of start deleting some of the files and getting it back to how it was before I started moving over to Germany. But with doing that, Obviously, I've started to open up some folders and started to see some stuff that I completely forgot I had on there. You know, stuff from like before I moved to Apex. And it started making me think, like, I don't think I've ever told people how I actually ended up living in Germany. And it's quite a wild story. So I thought we'd sit down, I'd go through it from start to finish and finally explain how I ended up working for Apex and how I ended up being in Germany. So sit down, grab a coffee and let's start. Right, okay, so I've had to make some notes on this because it's such a long story and I'm gonna forget something if I don't do this. But basically, to know this story, you've gotta know two things, there's two stories. First one is how I know Tim, and then how I got into photography, because basically the reason why I'm here now is because of Tim, but also because of getting into photography. So we'll start with chapter one, how I know Tim. So I've known Tim Morley, and if you don't know who Tim Morley is, he's our current taxi driver at Apex Nurburg. He's the guy that drives the Sherman M3 and the guy that drives the 600LT. And I've known Tim for about 10 years now, and I knew him from school. So we both went to Cold High School, which is a school in Myvenroyd in England. Yeah, he's 27, I'm 25, so he was always a few years above me. But for some reason, like, if you, any of you guys live in the countryside, you know that you kind of make friends of who, who you've got there. So. Like, not to, be, not to sound like a dick to Tim, but basically, like, for example, a lot of my friends are a lot older. Um, I've got friends that, you know, are getting on for 30, 32, and it's just because we just hung out with each other and we were a similar age, and it's just how it works in the countryside, you know, you, you get to know people around you, and that's kind of how I got to know Tim. With him being a little bit older, and when we started to learn how to drive and stuff like that, he had access to all these hot hatches, because basically, I don't know how it works in other countries, but... The kind of more years no claims you build up, the more affordable the insurance becomes for these cars. So when I was driving my Corsa D, a 1.2 weapon special edition heat steering wheel, man, I had, he was driving stuff like, you know, Golf GTIs. He had a mini John Cooper works, which was awesome. Like that thing was sick, like so much fun. And like, so like all my friends were driving stuff like this. And I, cause I was the youngest of the group, I, you know, I wasn't able to get that kind of, kind of car. So I kind of got involved with that, but as they started going for drives and things like that, I just didn't get involved because I just couldn't basically keep up, to be honest. But that's important for the story, you've got to remember that, okay? So that's that's step one of how I know Tim, okay? So I've known him from school. And then how did I actually get into photography? People ask, you know, were you taught? Do you go to university for it? Yes and no. It basically started when I had a great grandma and she was really old, she was in her 90s, and she gave us all, all the grandkids, 200 pounds to go and buy something that we'd enjoy and stuff, something that she could see us enjoying. And I come from quite a big family. There's seven grandkids on that side of the family. So we got 200 pounds each and went off and bought something. So, you know, some of the girls went and bought jewelry and things like that. And my sister went and bought a necklace. But I took the 200 pounds and went and bought a camera. And I bought a compact camera and it was a Canon at the time. It was second hand. And I'll, if I can find a picture, I'll, I'll insert it here. And I bought this camera for 200 pounds and just thought I'd just give it a go, you know, and see what it was like. This was back in 2007, 2008. So, what, 12 years ago now. And uh, I went to Monaco for holiday. Um, I wanted to go to Monaco. I begged my parents to go to Monaco. I've obviously seen it on Formula One growing up and I really wanted to go and see the cars. I knew that's where I was gonna see all the cars to go. So, got my little compact camera, went to Monaco and started taking photographs of all the cars in Casino Square. And obviously there's like Bugattis, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, like if I can find any of the photographs, I'll, I'll put them in the video as well. But the one thing that started to wind me up is when I was taking these pictures, it was just full of other people and I didn't like other people being, I was trying to get pictures of the cars, you know, which then, you know, I started talking to my dad, like how can I, how can I get these people out of these pictures? Like, can you stop them over there? Or, you know, just trying to find any way of doing it. And that's when he told me about Photoshop. So I got myself Photoshop, downloaded the trial version, tried it out, and I started teaching myself how to use the clone stamp tool to basically take these people out of the pictures. So I just had the car. 
And I spent hours and hours trying to perfect that and trying to get better and just keep, you kept going with it. And I found out that I actually really, really enjoyed Photoshop. I mean, if you see my photographs, everyone knows my photographs aren't coming out of camera like that. There's always post-production and enhancement. And I do more enhancement than usually the, the average photographer. It's just, I really, really like Photoshop and I really like how creative you can be with the program. I started developing that, started developing that even more. And then I started wanting to take it to the next level in terms of the camera because, you know, my, you know, my, my compact camera is great. I used it a lot, I loved it. But I wanted to go on to the next thing and obviously the next thing was moving into the SLR, DSLR format. So my dad was super into photography when he was younger, which is maybe where I get it from, I don't know, but he basically gave me his old film camera. It was a Minolta SLR camera and it, like I say, it was film. So I started shooting on film to make sure that I was kind of, you know, okay with how it all worked, if it wasn't just something I was getting into and then gonna drop, because obviously getting into photography is super expensive. It's like cars, like I've literally picked the two worst hobbies to do financially. Yeah, I started getting this film camera and started taking pictures. Again, absolutely loved it. I'll put some of the shots in there, in the video now. And just kept shooting and shooting and shooting and just, you know, using film, which was expensive because it's very expensive to get film now. To the point where I thought, okay, yeah, now I'm, I'm enjoying this now. I'm, I want to invest in a DSLR. And I found a really good deal around Christmas time on a Canon 40D. So that was my first DSLR. I bought the Canon 40D. My parents gave me some money for Christmas and I bought that and I used the kit lens. And um, to start shooting, obviously with that, you can shoot more, you've got more room to be more free because you're not burning through film. You've not got, you know, a certain amount of frames you can take in, in a session. You can just keep going until your card runs out. So I kept taking pictures and kept taking pictures. And then it got to a point where I started taking photos of people and found myself in a Saturday job. So in the UK, in schools, basically work experience, it's a thing that everyone does at the age of 15. I chose to work in a photography studio. I found someone I could work with. I went in there and started working for him and um, started to learn portrait photography. That's, that's my background. So I've been doing portrait photography for as basically as long as I can remember. It's only recently I've actually started getting into the automotive side of it, which I'll talk about later. So from the age of 15 up to 18, every single Saturday, I would go down to the studio and I'd help, I'd, I'd learn how to use strobe lights, I'd learn how to interact with people. I was quite a shy kid growing up, but in that job, it allowed me to start talking to people and interacting, physically moving people and, you know, getting them in the positions for the photographs and working with everyone, everyone from from like young people to animal. We, should, we did a photo shoot of a horse once. We did animals, we did kids' birthdays, we did weddings, we did family portraits, you know, all kinds of stuff, commercial work. And just kept going with that, kept developing the skills to the point where I, I found myself doing a lot of the work and found myself knowing that I could do this on my own. So at the age of 18, I quit my Saturday job and I started with my own studio. I rented a, a unit space. I designed everything from the studio space, the, the changing rooms, the offices. Like, it was a really cool thing. Like, I, I had to source builders, I had to source decorators, and just spent, spent the best part of six months building a space. I'm gonna take a sip of this, because there's a lot of talking. But yeah, built my studio, um, had a lot of fun with it, did a lot of photography there, a lot of commercial work, a lot of portraits. Just what I was doing for other people, but this time I was doing it for me and I could put more of my own style into it. And I kept doing that. But whether it was a good thing or a bad thing, I personally think it was a good thing because it was the best three years of my life. When I was 18, I was actually offered a place to study new media at the University of Leeds, which is a really quite prestigious university in the UK. It's one of the top 10 in, in England. The plan was Leeds is quite close to where I, where I live at home. The idea was to kind of go to university, do my degree, and then come back and work. In hindsight, I discovered going out, I <laughs> discovered going out, you know, having fun and stuff like that. And I found myself spending a lot more time at university than I was at my studio, which eventually led me to kind of move on from that and leave that behind and just go into more like freelance, you know, I didn't need a base. It wasn't necessary for me to have a base, but it was just something that was cool and something that I enjoyed. But then from leaving that, it allowed me to go more freelance and you know, I could do photographs of families in the parks and things like that. So I found ways around it. Um, but that's kind of where the studio side of it ended. 
So yeah, I started my university course and it was super fun. I decided to do new media because it was a broader area of work, for example. New media wasn't just photography, I learned how to do videos, I learned how to edit with different softwares, I learned how to develop my photography skills and listen to other people that had been successful in photography and all that kind of side of it, the theory, learning about the psychology behind buying, behind marketing, everything like that, it was all really, really useful stuff and I'm someone that loves to learn new things. So I found it really interesting, absolutely, like, I loved every second of it, it was awesome. I had the best friends in the world, which I'm still talking to now, you know, friends for life and it's just, it was just the best three years ever. One of the great things that I learned at university was something that I always wanted to learn and that was mobile app development. So yeah, I was learning to build iPhone apps with my university course, but I also wanted to do that for myself and my own business. So I learned how to do it. I kept learning how to do it and then I had quite a lot of success. And basically long story short, maybe it's a story for another time. I ended up with a number one app in the UK with over a million downloads. And the success of that allowed me to purchase my first hot hatch, which leads onto the story before with Tim. So I bought myself this, I'll insert into the video now. It was a liquid yellow Clio RS4, brand new. It was absolute spec and I absolutely loved it. And that allowed me to get more involved in what Tim was doing because I could go on these drives, I could keep up. I could go down to the units and work on the cars and start again, you know, starting to learn more about cars and how they work and mechanics behind it and things like that. So I'll insert a picture here. You'll see that there's actually the blue Clio from Apex. Tim's currently working on that in the, in the unit, in the picture. And that's my Clio in the background. So. I was getting more involved in this kind of car culture and being able to actually get involved and understand it and just have fun with it and that's what we were doing for basically every weekend and most nights after work. But yeah, in the meantime for my university degree, Tim was building his E36, the blue one which I'll insert in the picture here and um, if you guys knew that car, that thing was totally custom built, he stripped that down to the shell, there was like, I, I couldn't believe the work he was doing, I was always like, you know, watching what he was doing, super impressed with, with the build. And while I was at university and, you know, getting my first job, Tim was out at the ring every weekend lapping and meeting people and making the connections, making contacts, which inevitably let him, like, you know, join Apex as the mechanic, that's what he did. So whilst Tim was going out to the ring, I graduated my university degree. I got a first class degree from the University of Leeds, which I'm really, really proud of. And I started my first role that I was offered as a marketing um, manager, a social media manager at a marketing agency in um, Manchester. So I started doing that and it was, it was quite a demanding job. We looked after a lot of clients. And as I was getting more involved with that, I was getting less involved with photography and videography, which is what I genuinely enjoyed doing. So I decided that I needed to change something about that because I wasn't getting time to, to freelance. I wasn't getting time to do anything that I wanted. So I took a leap and I left my job in Manchester. It was a good job, like it was a really cool job. But I left that to pursue freelancing and get more involved in photography again. And uh, that's when I contacted Tim because he was at the ring. I really wanted to get more involved in automotive photography, but if anyone's out there trying to do that, you know how hard that is because there's so many spotters out there, you know. There's very, very talented photographers out there and platforms like Instagram are allowing people to share these pictures and being able to, you get spotted easier, but, it, but because you get spotted easier, it's almost harder to get spotted because there's so many people out there doing what you're doing as well. So, contacted Tim set up a meeting with him, wanted to go out and see him, wanted to see the car, wanted to go out on the ring. I'd never been to the Nürburgring before, but I obviously knew what it was. And um, flew out and started making some content with Tim. So yeah, I, when I was at the ring, I was doing stuff with him, with, you know, with the car and stuff. And one, link, one thing led to another. I inevitably met Robert and I inevitably met Misha. And then that's when they asked me if I could help Misha film a video for VLN, which I'll insert a clip of it now. And also, I was asked by Robert if I could help film a track day, which obviously, you know, Robert was here with Ferraris and McLarens and letting me be around them. Of course, I was going to help him out with that. That was a no-brainer, so I helped him out with that as well. And then, like, one thing led to another. I started getting asked if I could film the hotel, if I could take photos of the rental cars, if I could do um, a video of uh, the race navigator system getting installed in the M3. I was just getting asked more and more to do more and more things when I was there. And, Obviously me being British and not being able to say no, of course said yes. And then I unknowingly basically stepped into a two week trial at Apex. I, I was basically applying for a job that I didn't even know was available because Tim hadn't told me. So it's actually quite, we laugh about it at Apex now, but I was basically employed by accident at Apex. They employed me before I knew I was employed. So 
And yeah, getting on for two years later, I mean, here I am, sat in my apartment in Germany. Um, really like this place, this place is awesome. And I'm literally shooting cars, Porsches, you know, BMWs, everything. Customer cars, rental cars, lap record attempts, stuff for manufacturers, like, it's awesome. Like, I, I can't believe I've actually ended up doing what I wanted to do in through this path, but it, I mean, it just proves, like, it's literally just about making your own look, like, talking to people, finding contacts, doing what you enjoy, and just, without trying to get too philosophical and metaphorical at all, you just gotta do what you love, and that's, that's the in and out of it, you know? Because if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life, but it's true, like, you know, if, if you enjoy what you're doing, it doesn't feel like work. And when I'm taking photographs and when I'm doing videos and when I'm interacting with people and finding about you know their stories, how they end up at the Nürburgring, for me, I don't see that as, as work. So so yeah, I hope that wasn't too boring for you guys. I mean, I tried to keep it as short as possible. I don't even know how long I've spoken for, but that is kind of how I ended up living at the Nürburgring. And that's how I ended up being a British guy in Germany. If you have any questions about anything, just let me know. I'm going to start making more videos about stuff like this. And I like story times. They're pretty fun. Like a lot of my friends say that I have the best stories to the point when they think I'm lying, but I'm not. It's just, yeah, I get myself in situations just by talking to people. That's basically it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Um, like I say, any questions, let me know. And if not, I'm going to go and meet Bruno in about an hour. Yeah, in about an hour, we're going to film stuff in my car. Then on Wednesday, I'm going to a theme park, so plenty of content to come up. Thank you for watching. If you're new, subscribe. If you're not new, thank you for sticking around. Hit that like button, and um, see you again next time. Cheers.